So now we will be looking at the man and monison method, which is the simplest, one of the simplest methods which is generally employed for determining the RMS value of the fundamental components. We have already discussed the same in unit number one, the man and Morrison method. It is also called as the sample and first derivative method. Okay, just a little bit change on the sample and derivative method. The way how we will calculate the derivative that I will be changing in this method. Okay, so now let us suppose if you do have a peak value, sorry, if you do have a set of samples now, now let us suppose you have got a signal samples sample number and the value. So sample number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 like this you have got some samples and you do have the value let us suppose 0 0.791, 0 0.72, 2 2.34, minus 2.12, 1.69 like that you do have a set of samples. The sample number and value have been given for you and these might be of some power or voltage or current or whatever matter. But we assume that these are of sinusoidal form and we will assume that the fundamental assumption in this particular method is that these are filtered and they are of basically fundamental component only. See, I will write it here. The biggest the assumption is that the sample data is already filtered. And free of harmonics. Ideal case, this is not possible. So that's why this method is also not widely used. Okay. So, but taking the assumption that the sample data is filtered and free of harmonics. Now, some set of data has been given for you. You need to determine what is the uh, average or sorry, what is RMS value of this one. Okay. Or maximum value of this one. So now let us see how to determine the peak value when you do have a set of samples. We'll check first the derivation. Now let us suppose any signal if it is of a sinusoidal form, I'll represent as V is equal to Vm sin omega t plus theta, right? This is the equation. Now if I take the first derivative, V dash, how will I write Vm? This is sine will become cos and the internal derivative is omega, so that I'll multiply it. This is V and this is V dash, right? So if I rewrite this one, what is V dash by omega? This is Vm cos omega t plus theta. Right, now you use these two equations, one and two. You square them and you add them. What you will get? V square plus V dash by omega square is equal to Vm square sine square theta or whatever we do have plus Vm square cos square. Isn't it? Now, see, this is... Now, if you see, if I take V square common, you will get sine square theta plus cos square theta. This is 1. So, this is your equation. Now, this is the sample at nth instant and this is the sample derivative of the sample at nth instant. So, your V is now, I will write it as Vn square. Now, let us suppose if you want maximum value at nth instant. It is Vn square plus V dash at nth instant whole square. Similarly, for current also, you can employ the same. So, these are more of, inter these are sample data, right? So, I am removing this in time with my so, this is the way how we determine Vmax and I, I max. If you know the maximum value, we can determine the RMS value just by dividing it with root. So, let us concentrate on Vmax and I max. Once I do have this Vmax and I max, these are the magnitudes of the maximum values of voltage signal and current signal. If I do have this, then I can determine the magnitude of impedance, isn't it? So, how to determine the magnitude of impedance? Now, this is voltage signal. This is current signal. This is the nth sample and derivative of the nth sample. Nth sample of current, derivative of the nth sample of current. So the magnitude V by I mod V by mod V. I can write it as V max by I max, right? 
So in that case, this is my equation. Right. I can write it very clearly that here mod z v n squared plus a tenth sign. This data you can find them, Vn and In, the nth sample. But these data derivatives will not be given by you. So we need to apply numerical methods for that one to determine the uh, derivatives. That we will see in the next slide. But before that, how to determine the phase angle? You know, impedance will be having a phase angle, right? So it is angle of voltage minus angle of current. Now how to get these angles? You know, if I take V as V sin omega t, and I as having some value or you take both as same you take theta v you take this is theta v. okay so now what is z angle of z it is nothing but theta v minus theta v right theta v minus theta v. now I can write it as v is equal to v sine theta v and i is equal to i sine theta v now what is first derivative? What I'll get as already I mentioned. See, this is not the equation. V is equal to V sine omega t plus theta v. This is I is equal to I sine omega t plus theta. So what is V dash here? V dash is nothing but omega v. This is uh, Cos, right? Cos omega t plus theta v, and this is y dash is equal to omega. Yeah, this is cos, right? So now if I take v by v dash, v by v dash, v by v dash, what I will get is v and v will be cancelled. This will become tan, right? So I will get tan omega t plus theta v by this omega. Similarly, i by i dash, it will give me tan of omega t plus theta i by omega. Okay. So, if this is the case, now what is theta v? It is tan inverse of omega v by v dash c. This omega will go here, omega v by v dash is tan of omega. So I am taking it as minus omega t. So this is theta i is equal to tan inverse of omega i by i dash minus omega t. So if I want angle of z, what I should do? Theta v minus theta i. So this will get eliminated. So I will get tan inverse of omega v by v dash minus tan inverse of omega v by i dash. To be more precise, I will write it as tan inverse of omega this is a standard one this is at a nth signal nth sample if i want at the nth sample then i should do it for nth sample so this is the way how to determine the magnitude and angle so every moment you need to calculate the magnitude and also phase angle and you need to check it with your preset value setting value okay so now you do have a sample data and how to determine this impedance that we will see so how to derive it how to obtain the first order derivative using the samples now in the equation even in the magnitude equation so i'll show you yeah in the mag see this is the magnitude equation you do need in the sample and also derivative of the in sample similarly for angle also you do require both nth sample and also nth derivative sample. In that case, how we determine the nth sample is, earlier case, we have derived v dash is equal to vn minus vn plus 1 by 2, sorry, by delta t. We have tried this one. But here in this case, I will be trying v dash is equal to, see, let us suppose if you do have samples like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I want, this is the nth sample, this is n minus 1 sample, this is n plus 1 sample. So if I want this one, I have done, this is Vn minus Vn plus 1. By what is the distance between them? It is delta. 
But now what? Sorry, this is B and minus. But now what I am doing is I am taking this two samples now. So it will become V n plus 1 minus V n minus 1 by what is the distance? 2 delta t. This is based upon time. This is based upon time. Okay. Similarly, I dash. This is the only difference which you do have. Earlier we used it to take only one difference of the sample data. Now I am taking two different uh, samples with which I have two delta t as a difference. So this is the way how we calculate V dash and I dash. And based upon that, I can calculate mod set and also I can calculate angle of set. Both this is the magnitude and this is the angle. And once you calculate them, you will compare it with your setting value and then you will give a signal of whether you should trip or not. Okay. So I hope that now you have understood the max man and moon sign method. So how many samples you do require to calculate this one? See, this is the nth sample. Okay, this is the nth sample. I am writing it here. This is the nth sample. Okay. Vn you do require, Vn minus 1 you do require, and Vn plus 1 also you do require. Similarly, In, In minus 1, and In plus 1. How many samples you do require? Three current samples and three voltage samples are required. Simultaneous samples. Both must be at the same time. Okay. Those samples are required for you to determine the impedance. Apart from this, what do you require? This is the sample, uh, sorry, signal frequency. And delta T can be obtained from 1 by Fs, where this is a sampling frequency. So if you do have these data, then you can calculate these uh, impedance. And once impedance is calculated, you can compare it with the setting value, and then you can issue a trip signal. Okay. So the conclusion is, using the window of three samples, you can estimate the peak, enhance the RMS values of voltage and current, at the relay location as well as the phase angle between them. So just a window of three samples is enough for you to calculate Z magnitude and also phase angle. This is phase angle. This is phase angle and this is magnitude. Both can be calculated. Once these are calculated, you can compare it with ZZ and then you can shape signal. Okay. So this is the easiest method. But the only problem is that it assumes that drawback is, what is a drawback? Works only on filtered signals. In ideal case, we don't see any filtered signals. In bar systems means itself, there will be so many number of harmonics present in the system. So only filtered signals are there, then this method is applicable. Otherwise, it gives you erroneous results. Okay. I hope that now you are able to See, these are the limitations. Sensitive to harmonics may not well work well with signals that are more sinusoidal and a little bit computationally expensive because if you do have large data sets, then it is a problem. Okay. So, coming to the conclusion the distance protection is a name given to the protection whose action depends upon the distance of the feeding point to the pole and it takes in two values one is a voltage and the current and works on the ratio of both voltage and current. That is what we call it as an impedance. And in particular, Mann and Morrison technique, minimum requires three samples and works only better only if the signal is filtered. Okay. So with this, I'll be closing this lecture. I hope that now you are able to describe how a numerical distance production is implemented, how a flowchart can be drawn, and I hope that you are now able to determine the impedance of transmission line using Mann and Morrison technique. So now I will, let's try a problem now before I leave this session. See, this is the practice question. Okay. Uh, 